On Dispatches tonight, the new face of terror in Britain today. How violence is moving from the streets onto the doorstep, invading hearth and home. This week, Dispatches reporter Callum McRae penetrates deep into the heart of a sinister organisation calling itself Combat 18. Who's really behind them and who's on their hit list? But tonight's dispatch goes further, uncovering for the first time the true links between Combat 18 and the far-right party that now claims to be electorally respectable, the British National Party. That's dispatches on the frightening and disturbing trail of terror on the doorstep. nearly run over in the street. I started to cross the road, a car came up and towards me. I actually thought that it was going to hit me. And then it swerved away and sped off up the road. I got home and then received a telephone call saying, um, look left and look right next time you cross the road. The neighbours just over here saw a group of blokes in baseball, with baseball bats wearing balaclavas, come round the corner. We heard nothing until we heard a sudden smashing of glass here where I was sitting, all the way round and all the way round here. It was about two o'clock in the morning. I heard a noise outside the door of my flat, and I smelled a, a smell. So I went to look, and the whole hallway was in flames. There was a telephone call. Somebody told me they smashed your window, and now we're out to kill you. These attacks are not isolated. They were carried out by different people in different parts of the country, but they are all part of a sinister new campaign of neo-Nazi violence which targets people in their own homes. So who's behind this terror? Once the finger of suspicion would inevitably have pointed to right-wing supporters of the British National Party. But in recent years, they claim to have renounced their violent past for legitimate constitutional politics. Indeed, they won their first local election last year with 34% of the vote. So if it's not them, who is it? Tonight, we present the results of a five-month dispatches investigation into Britain's neo-Nazis. It's a story which demolishes British National Party claims to have turned its back on street thuggery. A story which links the BNP with an international conspiracy of violence and terror which has its expression in this country in a sinister organisation called Combat 18. Gary Kelly, this is Combat 18. You die. Telephone threats are a favourite Combat 18 tactic used almost daily to harass and intimidate anyone who dares speak out against them. But what is perhaps most disturbing about C-18, an avowedly Nazi organisation, is its shadowy relationship with the BNP. Dispatches has made contact with a number of sources deep within the BNP, including one man who, at great personal risk, agreed to discuss his growing concern about the actions of BNP supporters. BNP members go out leafleting leaflet areas and try and get support and talk to people. They have, like, the respectable image. Then if you get somebody coming out, mouthing it and saying, we don't want your type round here, you're racist, their name and address is taken down and they're targeted later on. They get a visit off C-18, they have their windows smashed or they have their windows daubed, writing daubed on the walls. Give them a good idea and make sure they don't say anything else again that's going to disagree with what you're saying. Of course, the use of violence against those who disagree is nothing new. What is different is the way that violence and intimidation is targeted on individuals in their own homes and then sustained, sometimes for months and months. Let them know that you know where they live. Go down and daub their house, smash their windows, smash their cars up. You find out where they're working, maybe even go down at work. Target the family, I mean. If they're not going to take it, maybe if you hit the family or hit the brothers, hit the sisters, parents, whatever, maybe they'll stay away then because it's not hurting them, but it's hurting the family and maybe the family will get onto them and then say, well, look, you're doing this. It's not hurting you, but it's hurting us. Jill Milner was a teacher in Nuneaton when she wrote to her local paper opposing racism. Within days, she was targeted by Combat 18. 
For the next 18 months, she suffered a systematic campaign of psychological and physical terror. I received a letter saying, die by the sword, which I'd razor blade stuck into the envelope. Death threats taken different forms. I was sent sympathy cards, um, cards saying, sorry, you're not leaving. Petrol poured on the doorstep, broken glass um, pushed through the letterbox. Now I was played music down the phone, um, tapes of women screaming. It sounded as though they were being chased and attacked. Piles and piles of junk mail, um, sort of not just any sort of letters. They, they were things that were sent to intimidate me. They were things about having plastic surgery, um, membership to health care plans, um, things about home security to make me think that I was at risk. Eventually, Jill was driven not just from her home, but her town and her job. I've had actually spent a short time in hospital because of the pressures that I was put under because of this. I think what these people intended to do at, at the outset was to, to stop me speaking out, but in effect it, the reverse has happened and it's made me want to speak out more about it. Leon Greenman also continues to speak out, but he too has been met by a systematic campaign to silence him, a campaign claimed by C-18 which has chilling echoes of the past because Greenman is an Auschwitz survivor who lost his young wife and baby in the Holocaust. Now 84, he regularly lectures on those terrible days. I gave a lecture about two months ago in Milton Keynes, one evening, and halfway through the lecture, in front of my eyes, outside the door, I saw a big flame bursting out. It was a petrol bomb they'd thrown. People rushed out. I got them back. We out at the fire, and that was the first attack on what I was doing. That wasn't enough for the Nazis. They threw a brick through my window. I was shocked. And what could, else could I think? And then there was a telephone call. Somebody told me they smashed your window and now we're out to kill you. If I was a canary, I would be living now in a cage. My house is fully alarmed. Indoors I wear an alarm around my neck. I feel like I'm back again in the camps. British neo-Nazis want to kill me, who, after 50 years coming out of the camps where the Nazis wanted to kill me. We are not afraid of what they have to say as they are afraid of what we have to say. John Tyndall has been leader of the BNP since its formation in 1982. His claimed commitment to parliamentary politics may belie 30 years of association with individuals involved in far-right violence, but he insists that the BNP has nothing to do with C-18. There was no official tie-up at all. C-18 was in, formed entirely independently of us. So C-18, as far as you're concerned, has never had any kind of role in terms of security or anything like that at BNP meetings? Not C-18 as C-18. That claim is at best disingenuous, because among the figures to frequently appear as official stewards on BNP and other far-right events is this man, Charlie Sargent. Charlie Sargent is a key Combat 18 organiser. And on another BNP rally near Wolverhampton, Charlie Sargent and other C-18 associates provide personal security for John Tyndall. Combat 18 is also active in Scotland. And here, too, Tyndall's claims seem to be given little credence by many of his supporters. Dispatches spoke to one Scottish BNP member who believes that in practice there is little to distinguish BNP and Combat 18 activists. The BNP say they have nothing to do with C-18. Well, we will no way we will no, uh, take anything to do with it. We will not admit to take anything to do with it. But at the same time, if our policies didn't work, it switched over to them. So you're saying that the C-18, it's the same people as the BNP? Yep. It's basically the same people, but a more violent side to it. 